Okay, so let's talk about the Fortnite music video. Taylor Swift's The Tortures Poets Apartment has already become the most streamed album for Taylor, as well as also making her the most streamed artist on Spotify history, which is just insanity, right? We'll see what other records Miss Swift is gonna break over the next coming weeks. But we gotta talk about the music video for Fortnite because I've listened to the Fortnite song. I would I, I wanna tell you like 10 times at least today or more. And we're probably gonna get a ton more replay value from it because it is just so good. The way the vocals and everything just work so well together with Post and also Taylor. I, I got a full review for the album, don't worry. And also I want to tell you to make sure you're subscribed and also hit the notification bell and make sure you comment below what you thought about the Fortnite music video as well as the album itself. Full review will be coming out probably Sunday, so stay tuned for that. But really, really vibing and loving this album so far. Now, the music video for Fortnite just came out today as well and I was so, so ready for it. Like the teaser and everything we got for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the music video like straight through what we saw and all of that. Then I'll also get into some Easter eggs that we probably see in it and just the overall meaning of it as well. So this music video honestly shot beautifully. It is from the same cinematographer that we saw for Kills of the Flower Moon as well as Barbie. And this is directed by Taylor Swift as well. So really great eye, honestly. And there's some references there for a lot of movies. Metropolis, some people are saying poor things as well. Um, a lot of surreal feelings in this uh, music video as well, which I saw in that one scene, which we'll talk about in a bit but the music video basically i my opinion is a sort of like person who has come out of this relationship as we see taylor at the beginning just sort of locked up almost in this sort of asylum of sorts and kept there giving this pill in order to forget him as it says on the pill bottle and it talks about the miracle pill as well in the lyrics so this is somebody who is just gone mad in love and now needs to get over this as well wearing this white dress almost as well which is sort of similar Similar to the one she wore at the Grammys as well as many people pointed out and sort of was in this state of this was going to be the big one this was going to be my forever ever after the title itself a fortnight which is about two weeks so that makes it seem like a short-lived relationship as well so we think Taylor could be talking about multiple things at once here this album really is just sort of like her heart is on her sleeve right here right she's just talking and saying everything she's feeling at the moment talking vulnerable, talking just whatever she is on her mind, right? And so it could be about two different relationships, but more alongside the type of relationship she had with Joe, I feel. And so we see as she takes this pill as well, and she starts to sort of take off her makeup, it seems, in the mirror, but not she is taking off the makeup where she was hiding these tattoos, which are the ones that Post Malone has. And Post Malone here playing her love interest, I think that it's just showcasing that even though she can hide as much as she wants from this relationship, and everything of it she's still feeling these feelings from it and still having these like conflicting emotions about this relationship because it's still all over her like people still associated her with joe because they were together for all this time and i think that that's something that's being talked about in this music video a lot we then see her transition from that white dress to this sort of mourning dress from the victorian era which was worn during the time when a loved one or close one had died you would wear this for a bit and i think that this is representing that relationship that has just died almost like they are moving forward from it from that previous room they were in where they were in mourning and they didn't know how to move on once they took that pill they were able to move on and they go into this next room where they see this person here who is Post Malone's character, who is playing the love interest in this. Now, when we're seeing them in the typewriters as well, we also see Post Malone writing on a typewriter, and we see this blue aura, which has been associated with Joe as well. So that's why many people are pointing that this is a Joe specific video. Also, really want to talk about this scene because it's my favorite scene where we see both of them type in the typewriter, and behind them, we also see all the other poets, you could say, that with this very surreal feel as well that in this room that they're in while all this is happening. Just want to point that out. Really surrealistic vibes, honestly, which I I really love from the music video. We then cut to some clips of both Post Malone and Taylor Swift together in what is a clear sign of the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. This whole reference to it, those vibes as well, of almost in these memories, trying to forget them and trying to move forward from these mem memories. And also how they're sort of in a silhouette type vibe of her head with all these papers, almost like this is something she keeps thinking about throughout and just is going back to it 
over and over in these lyrics that she composed. And so the papers as well that make all of this up, these songs she had written, had made for this uh, person, all laid the foundation for them. And now that's all that's in their head. Then we also get this scene right here, right after all of that, where we see this character now, after all of this has happened back in sort of that place where they were made to forget about this relationship and try to move forward now being tortured, almost giving us some Metropolis vibes here as well. Um, same thing also with the 20s aesthetic and the Clara Bow, which is another song that is also in the album, that 1920s look. Another interesting thing to note here is that Ethan Hawke and Josh Charles, who are in here, almost being like the mad scientists of sorts or the psychiatrists, whatever you want to call them, here are from the movie The Dead Poets Society, which the Tortured Poets Department, which is the name of the album. A lot of people are comparing it to the name of the film, which starred Ethan Hawke and also Josh Charles in it. Now you're seeing both of them here, which was a pretty cool Easter egg in itself. You also see a black dog here, which has been talked about in the album as well. And Taylor also talked about how this music video was going to be different parts of the album and little Easter eggs here and there for the whole album as a whole, but also the black dog also representing this depression that Taylor was going through at this time. And you also have Post Malone here who comes to save the day almost as we see that she's being tortured. Final shots of the video itself are of Post Malone in a telephone booth making a call while Taylor's sitting at the top of it getting drenched in the rain that is just falling and falling. And I feel like this could definitely represent a lot of different things. In my opinion, it's definitely how this person that you'd love so much is too preoccupied with other things. They're on their phone. They're just there and they're being shielded from everything. And you're the one that's taking all of that and they're getting drenched in this rain and all of that while they're too busy with other things on the phone and they're being protected from this rain which could be the scrutiny from the media the way that you're portrayed and things like that and you're just there alone taking it out in the end we do see however that this character that plays her love interest here post malone realizes where they are comes out goes ahead and gives them their hand which means that maybe things will be okay now and that's pretty much the music video in itself so i think that the music video just represents so many things maybe the things that you really want your partner to do or how you come out of a breakup and you meet someone new and you think it's going to be good and there's still all these problems as well you know there's many other ways we can go about this music video, but that's pretty much what i got from this especially from the beginning those moments with the white dress are pretty much when she is just out of this relationship is trying to figure out how to move forward and also that process of worrying the black dress and mourning that loss of this relationship and the loss of love here and just the end when everything's just getting wrecked and all of that sort of just how you compartmentalize all of these feelings and stuff like that to try and keep going forward since everything is put into compartments in this little room that they're in and at the end you realize that that might not actually be the best way to go forward and you just let it all out and that actually is the best way to heal is by letting it all out and just leaving nothing stuck or sort of repressed in your memory just making sure that all those feelings are out and just continuing forward and that rain also can be seen as almost a cleanse of sorts that just has happened and i really do think that there is so many ways to look at the music video but let's see what taylor had to say about the song and the music video itself we have to actually talk to iHeartRadio and explain the meaning of the song and says it exhibits a lot of common themes that run throughout this album one of which being fatalism longing pining away lost dreams i think it's a very fatalistic album in that there are a lot of very dramatic lines about life or death and i love you it's ruining my life these are very hyperbolic dramatic things to say but it's that kind of album it's also about a dramatic artistic tragic kind of take on love and loss she also goes on to say that the song in her eyes takes place in an American town where the American dream you thought would happen to you didn't. You ended up not with the person you loved and now you have to just live with that every day wondering what would have been maybe seeing them out. And that's a pretty tragic concept really. So I was just writing from that perspective. And so these lyrics really are just that, right? Just all of these things that are just almost like you're feeling like the, this whole thing about these neighbors 
who were together maybe at one point and then long to be together again, but now they are neighbors, each other having a significant other. And as we see that she talks about the wife and she sees the wife of the neighbor and they're doing this with their flowers and that they would just want to kill them. Like they feel these repressed emotions. I think also something to know with like some of these Easter eggs here we can talk about, of course, starting off with the blank space that we saw in the typewriter, which many people were uh, quick to point out as well, which is another one of Taylor's singles, which is one of my favorites, actually, as well as the Black Dog, which is a song that's on the album, but also just represents depression. Also, you have the face tattoos, which I already said, were the ones that Post Malone has, which was a cool nod to Post, but also in a way showcasing how you sort of mirror the other person that you fall in love with as well. You also have the Miracle Drug, which is also a part of the song as well. And also just talking about forgetting this person. The Us book as well is very important on Speak Now, which is the story of us. And so Taylor goes on to say this as well. When I was writing the Fortnite music video, I wanted to show you the worlds I saw in my head that served as the backdrop for making this music. Pretty much everything in it is a metaphor or a reference to one corner of the album or another. For me, the video turned out to be a perfect visual representation of this record and the stories I tell in it. Also, Malone blew me away on set as our tortured tragic hero, and I'm so grateful to him for every Everything he put into this collaboration. I'm still laughing from getting to work with the coolest guy on earth. But like I said, all of these references to the album in itself as well, but also to just Taylor's discography and legacy were just incredible to see in the Fortnite music video. I'm excited to see what else we'll be getting from Taylor for this era right here. Like I said, we'll be doing a review for the album this Sunday, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell to know when that drops, as well as comment below for your chance to win some movie packages we'll be giving away to to two lucky winners actually. So make sure you are subscribed and commenting down below. My overall thoughts about the music video is that it is representing someone who just came out of a breakup is trying to figure out how to move forward. They are in mourning. They are trying their best to see how they can move away from this, whether it's taking these drugs, whether it's doing these experiments or just trying to write them all out. But at the same time, this person's still on their mind. They're still thinking about them. They're still seeing them everywhere. And that might just be the only way that you move forward is to just confront everything, stop compartmentalizing everything, and just making sure that you express yourself say it all out loud. That's the only way you're going to know if it's something that's crazy or not. So I think that that's definitely something we see at the end when this person who is in mourning, wearing the mourning dress and all of that, it just goes about and destroys everything, lets it all out and just sits there in the rain, lets themselves get drenched and see what happens next. So I really thought that that was such a great way to end the music video as well. But let me know what you think and your theories and thoughts on the video or your explanation for it as well. But that's going to do it for me. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you follow us on social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. We'll see all of you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.